Hi friends! Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of November. Welcome to Advent where Jessica goes crazy and makes 25 videos in 25 days. Uh, today we're going to be doing my wrap up for the month of November. It's going to be short and sweet. What I typically do is start with my lowest rated book, work my way to my highest rated book, and this month obviously we'll be doing that as well, but it's not going to be as complicated. In the month of November I read a total of three books for a total of 880 pages. If you were here for October, way up here. <laughs> November? Way down here. Um, so I read three books. Let's talk about it. Really I didn't have a lowest rated book this month because I liked everything I read this month which is great. I mean technically giving everything I read a 4.25 or higher means I had a great reading month even if it wasn't like three books, right? So the first book is Harrow Lake by Kat Ellis. Uh, I gave that again a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This book follows our main character who her father is in an accident and she has to go to live with her grandmother uh, on her mother's side of the family. Her mother died when she was very young. Um, she doesn't ever really remember having met her grandmother. She has but not really. So she's sent to live in this town with her grandmother where her father who was a filmmaker actually made a film prior to her birth which is where he met her mom and her mom was the star of the movie and every year the town kind of brings it all back and it's like this big like festival for them. It's a big attraction. It brings in all of the people and it's kind of what keeps their town afloat. Their town also has this old like wives tale rumor thing of this creepy guy who basically kidnaps their people and eats them. So again 4.25 out of 5 stars. This book was fantastic. It had all of the creep factor. Like last month I read Rules for Vanishing which I think is one of the creepiest things I've ever read and this was right up there with it. Super fucking creepy. I had a fantastic time which is weird to say but I did. Uh, I had a fantastic time. I loved like the pacing and the way that the, the things just kind of like it was building and building and building and all of the creep and honestly like it's a YA so it's made for someone half my age and I do feel like I was able to like guess some of the plot twists and some of the things that were going to happen and I kind of figured out around the middle like what kind of things were happening um, but I feel like maybe someone without my life experience or someone who doesn't have the life experience of a 34 year old woman wouldn't necessarily guess those things. So I think as a YA it really stands up to that. If it was an adult novel I would you know bring it down a little bit but I'm not its target audience so um, I had a fantastic time with this book. Just again the creep, the absolute creep factor was so much fun. Just like just I will definitely be reading more from Cat Alice in the future. I think that the books just really like put you in that place and made you feel what the characters were feeling. Speaking of characters I didn't love our main character. She was okay but not like my favorite character ever but it's because she's like a 16 year old girl and I'm 34 and I want to strangle most 16 year olds. So I d that's not abnormal for me. Again not my I'm not the target audience so um, I feel like if you were in her age bracket you would probably really love her character so um, again loved it. Highly recommend if you like YA horror creepy spooky books. Yeah. Next was The Family Plot by Megan Collins. I gave this a 4.25 as well. This is an adult mystery thriller. It follows a girl named Dahlia who grew up in this family where her mother was obsessed with serial killer victims. She was Dahlia. She had a twin brother and she had a much older brother and sister who were like a maybe a decade older, maybe not quite that much older than them. Um, but ev all of the kids were named after these serial killer victims. A large part of this premise is that um, her grandparents were murdered um, before she was born and her mom moved to this like secluded island where she met their father and they grew up very weird. And the start of 
the beginning of the book brings us back to this house after everyone has grown up and the father has died so the kids are returning home except not all of them. The main character's twin, Dahlia's twin brother, ran away, um, I think f seven years prior, um, when they were like 16 or so. Um, he had run away and Dahlia's been looking for him for years, trying to find him. And she thinks that their father dying is going to be the thing that brings him back home. And the book just kind of goes off from there. I have read Megan Collins before. I read uh, The Winter Sister, which I really enjoyed. This is a family drama, which you know I love. Uh, family drama is one of my favorite mystery thrillers to read because families are fucked up, y'all. And I thought this one was really well done. I had some issues with some of the characters and I feel like there was like some weird character ticks, but also when you in the context of the story, see how these people grew up, like th that makes sense. Um, you know, they grew up isolated, they grew up, um, their parents, their mom homeschooled them, they weren't homeschooled and taught like the normal things we were taught, like science and math, they were taught like serial killer 101. So yeah, they were a little strange and that makes sense for the story. I think that there was like some weird um, suggested romance implications between Dahlia and another character like I think they were flirting for a large part of the book but also I don't think that was supposed to be part of the plot which was something that also happened in the Winter Sister and was part of what I didn't really enjoy in the Winter Sister and I don't want to say I didn't enjoy it here because it was like not necessarily there for me to enjoy but I just I felt it you know what I mean? Like sometimes when you like watch a movie or something and like you feel like these characters are going to get together by the end of it but they don't and then you're like well but why did I think that because like was there really that much for me to believe it and that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, like I, I feel like they wanted me to believe that it was getting there but it never really went there. I, I don't know. It was, it was just really the thing that just kind of irked me a little bit. Um, I will say uh, the family secret, man. I kind of knew halfway through. I, I knew about halfway through um, a large part of the family secret. But when you find out the whole thing from beginning to end, like, I went, oh, 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 oh. Like, as these things are being revealed, like, and, and, it is much like her first book where something's revealed and you're like damn and then you get another 30 pages and they're like but also what and then 30 pages later and they're like and by the way uh it kind of reminded me of um like a more popular book that many of you probably have read if you like you know adult horror mystery thriller whatever um would be home before dark by riley sager how like you just get like one twist after another after another after another and like what you believed isn't actually true because the plot reveals are coming from characters who don't actually know what happened. So well done. Loved it. Had a fantastic time. Really enjoyed that book. Uh, highly recommend. Will be buying a copy for my shelves. I have many books to buy for my shelves that I read in the last couple months because I am loving all of the mystery, thriller, horror, YA, adult, doesn't matter. Loving it. I am here for it. Give your girl all the recommendations, yeah? And then we go into the highest rated book of the month, and it's this. <laughs> the third book of the month was Witch, part three. A Crisis on Both Worlds, volume three, which is volume nine of the overall series. Again, these are titled weird, and you've heard me say that every time I've talked about these, but I mean, literally, it's called Witch, part three, A Crisis on Both Worlds, volume three, volume nine. Uh, so anyway, it's just weird. I appreciate that they put like the secondary volume on it so I know what order to read things in, but it's weird. Anyway, I give this a five out of five stars because for what this is, it's was perfect. This is one of the best one of these that I've read in a while. Um, they're all good. Like I've, I don't think I've rated anything below a 
three and a half. Like I really love this series. It's a lot of fun. I love just like an afternoon when I've got nothing to do and it's like rainy and gross outside just picking up one of these and just like flying through it. Love it. Um, this series is about five preteen girls. Um, I think they kind of grow into teenagers as the series goes on but I think in the beginning they are preteens and they're given powers of the elements to protect their world from a magical world. They kind of guard this veil that is separating the two worlds so that the magical creatures don't leak into our world and this one in particular uh discussed a lot of like larger topics bigger issues um things that have been brought up in previous uh volumes and I just had a really great time reading this and I if you like mid-grade graphic novels or if you liked the tv show back in the day when we were preteens ourselves highly recommend. That's it y'all. Those are the three books that I read this month. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns please leave them in the comments section down below. Also I'll be linking my full reviews for the first two books in the description box down below. I don't actually have a full review for the third book but because uh, I don't typically leave full reviews for the graphic novels but whatever. Uh, full reviews linked down below for the first two books that we discussed. Uh, that is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future including the next however many days of advent make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below and until then I will see you guys next time. Bye!